Elise, I am so excited to have you on the Rainmaker Family Show. I feel like you carry such um, authority um, in so many areas. You are an incredible mama. You are a high-level CEO, business owner. You are an amazing coach and friend. Um, and I am excited to dive more into who you are and what you've built um, and just how you were able to take the steps of going from um, like supporting other business owners um, and being more like behind the scenes to like running your own business and taking those leaps and steps, which oftentimes can feel scary. And like, am I equipped? Should I go back in the, the corner and hide and all those things? So welcome. Um, our audience is going to love what you have to share. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. Now, Elise, I feel like, you know, you are a new mom, which is very exciting. But you, I feel like, has, you've always carried a very motherly, like, kind of atmosphere. You're always taking care of other people around you. But uh, I remember we did a whole episode with Chelsea on, like, biggest shifts that she had to make running a business, becoming a mom. Like, you're, it's, it's very fresh right now. So I want to kind of pull it out while it's fresh. What are some of the biggest shifts that you've seen, you know, going from, hey, I'm just an entrepreneur to, like, I am an entrepreneur raising a world changer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think some of the biggest ones is, you know, before you have a baby, you're just like, you know, work was my baby. You know, what we built was really like, it got all of my time, all of my attention. And, you know, we just run hard, you know, like evenings, weekends, like it was just like grinding. And, you know, having a baby, it makes you kind of like step back for a little bit. And you realize like, wow, I actually have two babies now. You know, I have a business baby and I have a physical baby. And so, you know, for me, it was the shift of like learning a whole new rhythm of um, of life, you know, learning. And I actually think it was a huge gift and really good for me is it kind of like made me, okay, know when to run and when to pause and when to just be in the moment um, with my little one. You know, I think that was just a massive shift for me, um, you know, getting to just stop throughout the day. And I know this is big for you too, Chelsea, is like having that time in the middle of the day to like go play or go take them on a walk or go outside. And I think really just learning that rhythm was huge for me and has ended up being just a massive, massive gift. So yeah, I'd say that's probably the biggest one for sure. Okay. I would love to know how does being a mom, someone asked me this earlier this week and I thought it was like, that's so good. So how, how does it feel to be a mom right now? It feels a great question. It feels amazing. Yeah. I think it's like, yeah, you know, I nannied a lot growing up. And so, you know, I mean, I had a little one full time, 10 hours a day. And I remember by the end of that, I was like, I need a long break before kids because I don't want to do this again. You know, and so when me and my husband were talking about having a little one, I remember thinking like, oh no, like, am I going to love my business more than my baby? You know, am I going to be able to really step into mom mode? And it's, you know, I think for some people it takes a little time, like motherhood just, you know, it needs, you have to grow into it. But I know for myself, it was like, this is so core to who I am and what I'm made to do that, um, yeah, when I got him, I was like, oh, we've been waiting for you, you know, like you're filling this place that we didn't even know we need, you know, and so yeah, it feels good. It feels really, really good being a mom. Right mm, I love that. Yeah. Isn't it true how kids like fill a place that you didn't even in your heart that you didn't know existed. And it's like, I, I think it's so cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like also one interesting thing that happened to us with Kai was, you know, we stepped into parenthood. So Kaizen's our first, if anyone's listening, they're new. He's our first son. He's like three years old now. But when he was a newborn baby, we we're, were running our businesses and just like Elise, we had to kind of learn a new rhythm, mm -hmm. but it was actually in that rhythm that we saw such an increase in our business. Mm. And I don't know if you've seen that too, Elise, like in the last like little bit, have you seen 
like I, I don't know if this is like a this is a thing but i'm like man babies bring increase <laughs> it's like multiplication and there's like a growing thing mm. but it's also like i feel like it levels you up in your mindset and like your purpose and all these things it's such an invitation it can be an invitation mm -hmm. to that what have you guys seen in your business have you seen that happen yeah yeah 100 percent Pretty much when I got pregnant, within like two weeks, we we're like, yeah, we're pregnant. And then I got so sick. And for like the entire pregnancy, I was just like wiped out. And so I remember telling my husband like, all right, if we're going to keep going, like it's yours, like I'm out, you know? So like I retired for the whole nine months basically. And, you know, I'm really on the marketing end, on the sales end for us. And so that really, you know, would have stopped our, our income. But just like supernaturally, we just kept going and actually had one of the biggest years that we've ever had. And I really, you know, I think this goes back to the whole rhythm thing. You know, it's like I had been running so hard for the last two years before I got pregnant that then it like actually made me rest. And, um, you know, being in that place of rest, even though it was forced at that point, you know, I was sick, it really like, opened up another level of creativity and dreaming, you know, even thinking of like, okay, what could we do differently? And, you know, so absolutely, that was just while I was pregnant. And then totally agree, Stephen, like with what you're saying, it does, you know, it changes your mindset of even like, okay, I want even more time with my family. So how do I build something that is, you know, um, still the same level of it, of an experience for the people we're bringing into our world, but requires me less, you know, doesn't mean me like sitting at my computer all day, every day. And so definitely we have seen just massive growth since he uh, was born. So that's been huge for sure. Actually, the, how we met was uh, I actually did a session with you, Elise, and it was super powerful. I had a crazy breakthrough. I remember to this day, Chelsea has done sessions with you. And what these sessions are focused on is something called heart healing. Mm -hmm. Okay, heart healing. Now, if you're new to this uh, word, this phrase, Elise, how would you explain this to someone who is like heart healing? Like, what do you mean? Is this surgery? <laughs> like, what's going on here? Yeah, you know, it's so funny. Real quick caveat is we actually got somebody commenting on one of our ads that said, okay, can you suggest some surgeons nearby? And so there is confusion out there of what heart healing is. But yeah, really, you know, it's a process of um, of connecting with God. You know, we believe that um, that the Lord is the healer. And so when we ha hold this space, it's really almost like a counseling session between you and God and, um, and really just giving you an opportunity to have a conversation with him. You know, the Bible says that he's the healer, he's the deliverer, he's the counselor. And so all of these things, you know, the Lord can meet you right where you're at. And so really this time is just a conversation with him, allowing him to bring healing to anything that you've been through in life, anything that you're currently experiencing. And then we believe even speaking into, you know, where you're going, what's the next steps for you, all of that kind of stuff. So it's a special time. We love getting to do these sessions and love also hearing that, um, that, that you guys got some breakthrough as well, Stephen. I remember that was an awesome session with you. That was a couple of years ago now. Just that was a long time ago. It was yeah. like probably 20. It was before I was 19, 2020. Yeah. No, it was probably 2019. But I remember like, so like you guys, this is, it's like, think of like counseling with the supernatural involved. Okay. And so I remember uh, Lisa's was walking. It's very like facilitated. You're just kind of like, she's just like, almost like a guided meditation, right? Mm -hmm. Where she's kind of walking you through this, do this, think of this. I remember like I saw in my imagination, I saw a picture uh, during that season of me with like super big, um, strong arms, but like really weak legs. Do you remember this? Like, it was like the super, like you see those guys at the gym that like only work out their arms. And I was like holding up something. And like, we started asking kind of questions about like, what does this mean? And those things. And it was really in the season when I was trying to be the provider for the family, which I think a lot of men fall into that. And, um, and even some women, like I have to like, they like have all this like stress and toil around. I have to provide. And it was really, I was trying to like hold up this thing that actually wasn't mine to hold up. And God was really speaking to me that like, I'm your provider. Like God was trying to say that to us. What really came out of that was a season of like us learning that side of God, you know, mm -hmm. and him really showing us in very, very specific ways. Like, I got you. 
you know, just like our kids, like, like if Kai comes to me is like, dad, I need this thing. Right. He's like, I want this thing. Like I want to provide for him, you know? And mm -hmm. so it really like, I don't know. I just, we had never really, I think experienced um, God that way. And we went on a whole year where it was just like undeniable, crazy things happening where it was just like, I got you. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I came out of that vision that I kind of mm -hmm. had that gave me a picture to go like, here's where your heart is actually, here's how you're interpreting yourself and in, in the season you're in. Mm -hmm. And it's actually not good for you. You know, like it's, you can't hold the weight of this thing yourself. Mm -hmm. You're out of balance. Like you need to release this thing and, and let go. And it's such a powerful thing. And we could, we'll do a whole nother episode on that. I'm sure. I want to lean into this topic of healing, um, this heart healing topic, specifically for moms, specifically for entrepreneurs. I feel like one of the things that you guys have really broken through is even just the money thing. Like, I feel like there's a lot of kind of wounds around money and like perceptions or beliefs about money, even in the world that, um, you know, you're certifying uh, other heart healers. Like this is a paid service that people pay to, to become certified. And at least team will certify them in this service. But like, I'm sure you've seen the most like biggest objections around money, you know? So talk to that a little bit, because I think some of our um, rainmakers definitely can sense this, whether it's like fear of money, whether it's uh, oh, I don't, I want to be greedy or oh, money. I shouldn't be selling my product for that much money. You know, like there's all this resistance. So mm -hmm. what have you seen in your community and, or maybe even in your own life that you've had some breakthrough on? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think definitely the space that we're in, you know, any kind of um, ministry or something that people would assume should be for free. It's definitely tricky to break through with like just mindsets. It's the whole thing of like, okay, is it okay to charge for that? Can you, you know, how much should you charge all of that? And I know for myself, you know, I did these sessions. I actually had a whole season where um, I did them for free. So I raised support to be able to offer inner healing full time. And I was, you know, living in San Francisco at the time, which is like the worst place to live on support and, uh, and, you know, try to make that happen. So, um, you know, for me, it was really like just needing to see that money is a, a tool and without it, like you can't get too far. And so when I started to get this vision of, um, you know, people being able to do this in a way that's sustainable because, you know, I'd also been at other seasons where, you know, I was working full time and then squeezing in a couple of these sessions around work or around family or whatever. And you burn out because number one, like you don't have it. There's only so many hours in the day. And so, you know, you're burning out. Um, you you want to do this. Like I was so passionate about it. I was getting to see the breakthrough. I was getting to see the impact that I was making. But, you know, I just couldn't do it without charging, you know, because it's like, otherwise you don't have the time, you don't have the capacity or the resources. And so I started to get this idea of like, what if people could do this in a way that's sustainable, that they could you know, really devote their lives to it and, um, and be able to support their effects, support themselves and their families at the same time. And, um, and just, you know, putting that out there and starting to see, okay, are people even want to do this full time? Is there any interest there? So, you know, for me, it was really like starting to see that what we did was valuable and it was worth, you know, somebody sewing into. Um, and the other thing is we just found that people who pay or invest in themselves, they show up differently. You know, the whole time I was doing, um, you know, giving stuff away for free People didn't show up. They were not really there present. It was just a totally different kind of experience than those who, you know, were ready to invest in themselves. And so we really see it as like, hey, this is an opportunity to invest in yourself, um, in your own growth, in your own story. And um, and also it's honoring our time and the years that we learned to um, to lead someone through it, got equipped, all of that you know, we think that's a, a fair exchange of value. So for me, it was really like getting over the hump of like things in church don't all have to be free, you know, and it's actually going to be better for everyone if this is something that, um, that there's an investment into. So yeah, it definitely has been a journey for sure. Um, and I would say we're even still on it, you know, helping our community break through in that as well um, to really see themselves 
as valuable and what they have to offer is as valuable and worth investing in too. So yeah, it's been a journey for sure. I remember when Steven first told me about heart healing and how he had done a session. And <laughs> I think I grew up where counseling or any kind of like counseling or looking inward was, was, you know, the opportunity to be like loud and clear, like I have a problem, I have issues. <laughs> and uh, we all have problems. We all have issues. I recently was talking to a mama and she said the word sustainable self-care, which I had never heard about. And so many times as mamas, and I think this as entrepreneurs, like we focus on the outward. So like getting your nails done and going on the trip and doing some shopping, which is all, it can be good, but is that really <laughs> like sustainable long-term and how it's important to go inward and focus on the inward self-care and this is more than just like self-care by any means, looking into your heart and what is going on and how God sees you and areas where you feel like there's wounding and understanding like where was God in that moment? It changes everything. I mean, Stephen, you know, we're just sharing about his experience now that like we went through this phase of God is our provider. We're not a provider and to lean in and not be so scarcity minded and the fruit of all of that is rainmakers and this podcast and you know it, and so much of that i think it's such an amazing opportunity to like go inward and in what you're doing and i yeah i'd never heard of sustainable self-care and that's so important yeah that's so good chelsea and i you know i think that's such a big piece with this too is it's like a lot of people don't come in until you know life hits the fan and things are really really tough but i know for myself if I was growing up, you know, and I was 13, 14, and I had the tools to like navigate my own internal world before stuff happened, I would not have had so much stuff to work through when I was an adult. You know, we all have that. We all go through stuff. And especially as a mama, you know, it's like your kids are smart. You know, they can pick up on what you're going through. Even if you don't say it, if you're carrying around stuff, inside they're you know they're smart little ones so I just totally totally agree I know for at least for me and my mom journey having that you know space to even come away and get recharged you know figure out what's happening inside of me create space to connect with the Lord has been just huge Elise I feel like you are such an encourager um and I know that it's been a journey um for you, even in entrepreneurship and stepping into that and not being held back by fear. So I would love to know what your encouragement would be to like mama's looking for like that opportunity or even in a space that they are just being fearful of like all the negative what ifs, like uh, what are some breakthrough or some things that you could speak and do? Because I know that that's big on your heart too, just empowering people to make powerful decisions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think my best advice is like, go for it. You know, you, uh, you have this opportunity and, you know, there's a mentor that Stephen, Chelsea and I, um, you know, all are mentored by, and he always talks about like, what's in your hand, you know? And so thinking about, um, what do I already have? What, you know, what are the gifts that I already carry that, um, that I can start to step into and use? And, Someone challenged me at one point because I would do the what if of like, well, I don't know business. You know, I've never been an entrepreneur. I went to school to, you know, study psychology. I know nothing about entrepreneurship. What if this? What if that? And somebody was like, well, what if it all works? And what if it just like ends up being awesome? And I remember like, I didn't think about that what if, you know? And so it was like this whole perspective shift for me of starting to be like, okay, but what am I going to lose? Like, if I just try, what am I going to lose? It could just be like, well, okay, I gave it a shot and, you know, it didn't work. But you'll never know unless you step out. And so, you know, I, again, I had no, I knew nothing about entrepreneurship. It was really just like a leap of faith, you know, following something I was passionate about. Um, I knew I wanted to help people, you know, in these sessions. I wanted to train other people. And so the first step, you know, I think that's a piece too, is like just taking one step at a time and just saying like, okay, I'm going to try this one little thing and see what happens. And for me, that was hosting my first online training. 
And I didn't run ads. I didn't know how to do that. I had no idea. And so I just was like, put it on Facebook. Like, hey, anyone want to learn what I know how to do? And it ended up being awesome. And then from there, you know, it just kept building. And I learned little tools. You know, I didn't even know how to take people's money. I'm like, how, do you guys all want to Venmo me? Like, I have no idea how I'm supposed to get your money. All of it was like from ground zero. And it's just been amazing. As we've continued to say yes and say, take these little steps out in faith along the way that it's just continued to expand and grow. And so I think that's my encouragement is like, take those little steps of faith and, you know, you really have nothing to lose and you never know what's on the other side of that. Uh, you know, what if it does work? So that would definitely be my encouragement is just go for it. What would you say people's biggest misconceptions are about heart healing specifically and like wanting to do a session themselves? Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that you're, um, we're going to like open up your closet of skeletons and like, you're going to have to bear your soul in a session. And so I think a lot of people come in really afraid. Like, are you a priest? Am I confessing to you? You know, and um, that, you know, is always so funny to me. And, but also like totally get to put people at ease of like, no, you know, you don't have to share anything that you don't want to. And again, this is between you and God. And one of the amazing things about the Lord is that he's a gentleman. And so he never pushes you faster than you're ready. Number one, he already knows everything, but number two, he's never going to you know, go into something that's painful or hard that you're not ready to talk about or, um, you know, want to bring to him. Trust with the Lord is super important. So if you don't currently have a relationship with him, he's not going to push you into something. That's something that comes up a lot. And I love getting to bring clarity on just like the nature of God that he's gentle, he's kind, he honors us, he honors our hearts and our process. And, um, and it's supposed to be fun. Like it's a good conversation with the Lord is the goal of it. And whenever you're ready to go into things, like he gently leads you into it. Um, and it's never to expose or like relive this situation or anything like that, but, um, but to bring healing, you know, and show you where he was, like you had said, Charles. So and that's a big one for sure. It, I think people think Reese. When, when I hear you say that, I'm like sensing this. So I'm just going to go for it. Feel free anyone to add things. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I feel like sometimes people, whether, you know, you didn't have a good relationship with your dad or whatever, that we think like God is mad at us or that we start this business and we're going to be punished because X, Y, and Z, or, you know, we did that one bad thing <laughs> that we never told anybody about when we were in college and these deep, dark secrets. And like, I just feel like I'm supposed to say like, God loves you, like right where you're at. He knows your heart. He has good things in store for you. He's not an angry, mean, vicious God that has like, you know, rod that's waiting any moment to strike you down. <laughs> like that's not God. He's good and he's loving and he's on your side. And I just feel like if you've had things in your life that have been like really hard, he's been with you in that too. So mm. I just want to press into that for a moment as you like brought that up, Elise. Yeah. And I know this is probably a different conversation for some people listening, you know, cause we don't always lean this way on mm -hmm. our podcast, but I think if you're open to experiencing something kind of beyond you, mm -hmm. something supernatural that like is kind of unexplainable, I would book one of these sessions yeah. because nothing crazy is happening. It's really just, you know, a counseling session that someone's walking you through mm -hmm. kind of a, like I said, very much like a meditation. Hey, just picture this. What do you see? And like we do this with our Rainmaker Challenge. Like we take people through the seven level deep experience where it's mm -hmm. like you just start asking these questions of like, why do I want this? Why? Why? Mm -hmm. And you keep asking why. And we just tell people, go with the first thing that comes to your head, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that first thing that comes to your head is you. And sometimes it may not be you, you know? And I really believe that God speaks to you a lot of times in that voice that sounds mm -hmm. like a lot like yourself or like a thought that was kind of outside of you. Like it was like, wow, where'd that mm -hmm. come from? And a lot of times these sessions are leaning into that space. Let's just, you know, like you're a creative person. You know, um, God is creative. He, you know, he's going to speak to you in these creative ways. And we've seen so many cool stories come out of these sessions where 
people have just really powerful insights and connections, even in their business, their life, like their marriage, these relationships. And a lot of times it's not even like going in with like, oh, I got this thing I really want to work through. Like sometimes it is like I have this event that, you know, I keep thinking about and you really want to target that thing. But sometimes if you just go in for like the experience, like um, you're going to have one and it's going to be really powerful. So yeah. um, I just say that because I was kind of very similar where I kind of went in feeling like, oh no, like, you know, like, can she read my mind? I don't know. You know, or like, I don't know, you know. So uh, I went in very hesitant. And I also don't think I had a specific thing that I was yeah. going in for. I just heard it was cool, like from a friend. Yeah. And like, I was like, I'll try it. You know, like, yeah. I like experiences. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. And it ended up being such a powerful, like, aha moment that I remember to this day that, like Chelsea said, has really impacted how we operate with even money and finances. So I would encourage you guys to go do this. So at least like, if someone's like interested in this, they just want to dip their toes in. It's not too scary. I promise you guys, yes, where not. can they find you on the internet? Where can they find your, your people, your certified heart healers? Yeah. Yeah. So they can go to hearthealingnetwork.com and, uh, and that's where we have one on one sessions. We have a bunch of things going on in our world, but, um, but that, you know, if you're like, Hey, I want to experience this, try it out, you know, uh, see what this is all about. That would be a great place to start. Arthealingnetwork.com. Got it. Cool. So good. We're big believers in counseling and all that stuff too. But like, um, there's something about like tapping into the supernatural that can totally accelerate things sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you've probably, you probably have so many stories about this that you probably can't even share, but like where people are like, you know, they've been maybe in counseling for years for a certain like thing they're trying to break through. And then in one session, it's just like things break through. And it's not always that way, but it, it is powerful when you lean into something that, you know, is bigger than yourself. I mean, I know this, this episode may be stretching for some people, but mm -hmm. we bring this on because this is something that's brought us breakthrough. We want to bring things that have given us breakthrough to you guys as our mm -hmm. listener. 100%. Yeah. I think, you know, the business ones, are always so much fun to me when people get breakthrough in their business, you know, maybe God was doing something in their heart, but then there's something about, you know, our heart is connected with everything, you know? And so as your heart gets healed, you know, that changes your whole life. I know for me in my own healing journey, as I started getting healing, it affect my marriage, it affect my business, you know, all of, all of those places. So yeah, for sure. The business breakthroughs where it's like light bulbs go off and then it shifts something for them. That's, that's so fun to see. Cool. Thanks so much, Elise, for sharing. I can't wait to hear or maybe not. I, I know that this will bring a lot of impact. So thanks for, for being on with us today. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. Hey, if you are not a part of our Rainmaker Mastermind, we have a new opportunity for you to book a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with one of our Rainmaker coaches. If you want to get a call with them, see if it's a good fit for you to work with us to build a business that allows you to have time freedom and financial freedom, you can get that call at makeitrainmama.com slash podcast. That's makeitrainmama, M-O-M-M-A, dot com slash podcast.